Mrs May hopes for a huge endorsement of what she means by Brexit. So is this the last hurrah for the Remainers, or do they have any hope of stopping Brexit in its tracks? Here's Gina Miller with her take of the week. Brexit land, a few years down the track, worse off, deserted by foreign workers, and without the great opportunities we once had. The government must not be allowed to succeed in killing off all opposition to Brexit. In an ideal world, we'll have time to put together a progressive alliance, but there simply isn't that time. That's why I'm part of a crowd-funded tactical voting campaign, hoping to endorse those who are opposed to a hard Brexit. We're hoping to back a wide slate of candidates who we can trust will back a meaningful vote at the end of the negotiations. So many MPs are against Brexit, but can't speak up because of the referendum. Look closely at what candidates say on the issue and vote for the one who stands on principle and does what's best for Britain. You said at the end there, talking about voting for people who do the best for Britain, but that's just code for wanting to vote for people who stop Brexit, isn't it? <laughs> We're not talking about um, stopping Brexit. It's this what is... you want to do. No, it is not. If you stand back from the emotion of this all, it is pure logic and common sense that there are all options on the table. And there are broadly three options. One is for a fantastic deal where everyone gets what they want. The second is WTO, which the government itself has accepted is far more complicated than they first envisaged. And the third is looking at if we would be better off remaining. Now, anybody who says... And you would you should... vote to remain. No, because I was never for a remain or leave. It was about remaining if that was the best option. But this has to be you about do options. Everything is calculated to thwart Brexit. That's what you're about. It, there's nothing wrong with that. It's a democracy. You have am... to thwart whatever you, you want. But why not just admit it instead of having this kind of carapace of other motives over it? Well, I love that you know what's in my mind, because it's not. <laughs> it's I it's actually quite easy to see. <laughs> no, it, I mean, no, it is hold not. Hold on, you just talked about a country. We will be deserted by foreign workers. That, that's the, that was how you opened your piece. You think we're going to hell in a handbasket if we leave. No, I'm interested in the facts. I'm not interested in the emotions of any of this. Well, why will we, we, we be deserted be by foreign workers? Because you can already see that if we are not going to have um, access to free movement, there will be a problem. Why will we be deserted by foreign workers by leaving the EU? Because we will not have free movement of people. But why will we are be we deserted? Deserted means all the people coming who are already here will leave. Why? Well, from the experience I've had since I started my court case, there is an ear around people in the UK where they feel that How they've been kicked left? in their stud. They haven't left no. yet. But so why, why would they? we be deserted? I mean, the point is that that phrase, deserted by foreign workers, a Britain much poorer, it shows what you really think. It's a perfectly legitimate point of view, but you don't seem to want to be honest enough just to admit that that is what your game plan is. I'm honest enough to say that nobody knows the future. I'm well, not no, you just said we'll be deserted by foreign workers. No, that is a possibility, and already we're seeing that people are feeling that they're not welcomed here, and that then somehow... Well, who's not welcome here? I get thousands and thousands of emails from people and messages and phone calls from people saying that they feel then they are no longer welcomed. But that's because I'm... you've taken a high-profile position. Mrs. Mayor herself was a Remain, uh, Remainer. But if she now campaigns uh, for Brexit in this election campaign, in which she says, which is her position, we're leaving membership of the single market, we want to leave the customs union, we want to get out of the European court, and we want an end of free movement of people. Yes. And if she wins the election on a big mandate, she's got a negotiating mandate to do that, hasn't she? Absolutely. So I, th it would be wrong to thwart no her. Well, no, of course there wouldn't be. Because, I mean, the... the, the so what's the point of this progressive alliance? Because what we're talking about is ensuring that there isn't this huge mandate. Because the options, as far as we see it, is that you have a, you know, you look back to what Francis Pym said in 1983, is that, you know, an elected majority is almost an elected um, dictatorship. And that's the thing we're saying. Well, it was people, Hailsham that um, said election dictatorship. But Francis it, Pym just speculated that maybe the Tory majority, majority could be, too, to to be too big. But you would accept, therefore, if she gets a, because she will have to spell out what her negotiation negotiating position is, is, is going to be I think all the, man uh, all the manifestos uh, will. Uh, and if she gets a mandate for that, then that's it. She's got the mandate to go and negotiate if she on has, that basis. She does, but no prime minister is above the law. 
And if in 18 months, two years, five years, whenever it is that the Prime Minister comes back with the negotiated package and doesn't give Parliament a full meaningful vote, then we may have to seek the advice of the courts on to whether she's allowed to do that. Back to the courts. Because nobody is above the law. Uh, I understand that. Um, but if you turned tinkering or interfering the democratic process into a rich woman's hobby? Um, when is it my hobby and when is it I'm a rich well, woman? Well, it seems it's, it's, um, I actually have a significant day job and several other day jobs. Mm. This is not a hobby. I'm a transparency campaigner. I've done this for nearly a decade. And also, is it okay that if I'm rich because I've earned my own money that I might use it to do no, my I've civic No, I've just duty? wondered whether it's become your hobby or not. It's absolutely not my hobby. Because I'm doing what I think is right. Because when you did the court case at the beginning, you said that I just want the court case to rule that the Commons gets a vote on it. That's absolutely. all I'm It was about. about democracy. And you did absolutely. that. Absolutely. But now you're on to uh, a progressive alliance, and now you're saying I may have to go back to the Which courts. Which is still about democracy. Yeah, but it, it is seems still about democracy. It's given you a new purpose in life, hasn't it? Absolutely not. It's the same yeah. purpose, which is everyone has the duty to stand up for what they believe in. And if they believe in democracy, then stand up and talk about it. Okay. Gina Miller, thank you. I think we'll see you again.